Going try a lot. Test me in again, we let it rain. Kids don't start us up. Got that black and white, they ain't your game. It's the officer. Please don't search us, we don't got a thing. Tell them park it up. Then that nigga be parking out them jeans. I've been sparking up. Let the fireworks, I keep the flame. Heard you parking up. It's the wrong tree, I got the strings. Yeah, I'm charging up. They can keep up, got them looking drained. Now they walking up. Trying to put the face to the name. I pull up and I scrap and I'm swerving. If I try to holler, she gon' curve him. Yeah, these d***s all square like Irvin Yeah, we grew up in the hood, no suburbans If I say I need my money, then it's urgent Yeah, yeah, they want me to quit Yeah, they want me to shift But as long as I'm alive, we gon' keep on making hits Why they steady shooting bricks? Man, it's lit, it's lit. Hey, they can't press him, man He can't them, man. go on me They can't press him, He can't him, go on me in this video, I'll break down how to edit a sports mixtape in Final Cut Pro 10. So you see right here, here is just an example of a little sports mixtape that I did for Tyree Kill. Now this video is not going to be a step-by-step -step tutorial because that would take a very long time to kind of go step-by-step -step showing you how to create all the effects and all the different, you know, sound design, tips and tricks and all that stuff. This video is going to be more of an editing breakdown. So this video is focused more towards intermediate and advanced video editors. Unfortunately, this is not really a beginner friendly video. So if you're a beginner, hopefully you still learn something. But just know this video again is a breakdown. And I'm just going to give you my thought process, some tips and tricks, some do's and don'ts. Just going to give you my overall just ideas and tips and tricks and things you just want to you know keep in mind when you're editing a sports mixtape. Now this is one of the first like real sports mixtapes that I've edited. So I kind of want to share it. Go I kind of take you along the journey, share you my things, my mistakes, the things that I liked. So hopefully you learn something in this video. I have timestamps down in the description below so you can jump to different parts in the video. So let's go ahead and you'll continue on the video. So the first thing you want to do is you want to organize your clips. So I'm actually editing the video off an external hard drive, a Samsung T7 to be specific. If I click on the hard drive or double click on the hard drive, as you can see the folder is saved in the hard drive. So I'm not actually editing off my computer, I'm editing off my hard drive. So if I double click on the folder right here, as you can see the library, the cache data, and then if I go into you know, I, I final edits and I go into media, here are my assets, my drawing animation, my thumbnail, my photo, my music, clip, sound effects it's really important to have everything into folders now I'm not gonna again give you a step-by-step -step tutorial but basically you, I, I already have a video going over how to edit off a hard drive but all you would do is go over here to file you would go to new go to a library right here and now once you're on library you would scroll down until you find Samsung and then click on your folder so let's say editing assets right here click on this folder and then just click on save and then we'll save it to the hard drive it's really important if you're new to video editing always edit off an external hard drive I made the mistake in the beginning of editing off my computer always always edit off a hard drive now once you have all your folders in your hard drive and you have your hard drive connected or your Final Cut library connected to your hard drive what you want to do is import media so click on command I to import media and now what you do let's scroll down until we find um, the Tyreek Hill folder so we're gonna go down to here click on media and then you click on import selected copy all these settings because it will make sense a lot later but you just click on import selected you want to import all the folders and then if I click on if I click over here as you can see I have all the different tags because I've, I created all those subfolders so organization is really important another thing to keep in mind with organization and the overall workflow is what you want to do is head over to view and then change it to proxy only because of the way you import it clicking on proxy only you don't have to worry about anything else so it's really important how you import the media so I always edit with proxy media so all I do is click on proxy only that's gonna take a little bit while to render but using proxy media is really important another important step is the gap clip as you can see this little thing right here all it does is it basically avoids the magnetic timeline now you can still use the magnetic timeline by putting media over here so it's a personal preference some people it's very it's a very controversial thing some people say don't use it some people say do in my honest opinion I think it's really really valuable highly encourage you to use a gap clip all you would do is click on option W to create a gap clip a couple of the things to just keep in mind is I would always encourage you to create a rough draft so I kind of just created a quick little rough draft before I added all the sound effects and the visual effects creating a rough draft is really important also color coding your clips as you can see right here I have all the different um, clips color coded if I right click and go over here go to assign video rules you can see here on my video rules audio rules so you just click on here to edit rules and then you just add an audio roll 
or add a video rule. Color coding is really important. As you can see, it's just really organized. Also, it just looks really cool. So color coding is really important when it comes to organization. So before you do any of this stuff right here, you have to obviously create a new project. So all you would do is click on command and to create a new project. Now you would title the project whatever you want. And then here's you can change the format vertical square 1080. So obviously this depends on you. You can change the resolution. You can adjust the frame rate. I would say Apple Pro is 422 in my opinion is the best codec. And then I would probably always switch it to Rec 709. So here are the settings that I use for um, my video. So Rec 709, Apple Pro is 422, change the frame rate, adjust the resolution, change the format, and then name it whatever you want. So obviously you have to create a project before you do any of this stuff. So just keep that in mind before you do any of this stuff, you have to actually create a project and make sure all the settings are correct. The next one I'll go over is music some different tips and tricks when it comes to editing music now if you're using a track with vocals i would also encourage you to use an instrumental version because the instrumental version can be really good for the end because it feels really weird to just fade out vocals fading out the instrumental version in my opinion i think is really nice now a couple tips and tricks when it comes to that as you can see i've done it differently in a whole bunch of different videos one tip that i can give you is find a like a beat drop so i would take the the vocal and the instrumental line them up make sure they're all lined up and then find a really obvious beat drop to cut between the vocal and the instrumental version just so it's a very um, a seamless transition. Other thing that's really important is edit to the beat. Anytime there's a, a big beat drop always 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 edit that. You don't have to edit to every single beat that's a personal preference but editing to the beat if you watch my video with the audio you'll see that there are a couple really big beat drops that I have cuts on. Always always edit to the beat especially on big um, beat drops. Now as you can see right here, another little, really cool tip or thing that I've learned that I've actually never really seen anybody do before is use mic'd up or commentary moments to transition in between the music. So as you can see you have the vocal right here and then I have a mic'd up moment and that transitions into the instrumental. So if you hear, if you listen to the video again, you'll see that the vocals start to fade out right here. So the vocals are going to start to fade out and then we have a mic'd up moment of Tyreek Hill and then that transitions and when he's done talking, now you're into the instrumental version. So I found using mic'd up moments, commentary moments can be really helpful to transition in between um, the music. So what you would do is you want to go to the end of the vocals, drag the vocal so it fades out, and then as, as the vocals are fading out, the instrumental version is fading in, and then you have this mic'd up moment over here to just cover up that transition. That is just a really cool thing that I've learned. There are a whole bunch of different ways to do it. Again, I'm just giving you some different ideas. Another really important tip when it comes to editing music is match the clip with the lyrics. So maybe you're doing a basketball edit and in the in, in this song they're talking about basketball and maybe one of the lyrics is like I dunk on them or something like that. Well you should have a clip of your subject dunking the basketball. So sometimes matching clips with lyrics is really really helpful and it can just tie the music in the video. Again it's really important to make the music work with the video. You don't want them fighting back and forth. You just want the music and the visuals to kind of seamlessly blend together. The next I want to go over is editing cuts and just some things to keep in mind. Now one of the biggest things that I always do when before I make a cut or cut between clips is I always go to the beginning of a clip or I try to go to like the end of a clip. I always try to go to the beginning or the end of the clip and see if I can get the subject pretty much in focus. So if I want to use a freeze frame transition later. So every single clip go to the beginning or the end of the clip and see if you can start or end with the subject pretty in focus. That way you can use it as a use it as a freeze frame transition. That's what I always do. I try to start and end the clip with the subject in focus so I could potentially use a freeze frame transition um, you know, down the line. So it's just really important to see if you can always try to do that because it's really hard to do a freeze frame transition when the subject is really blurry. A couple things that I found sometimes look um, good is actually having clips together. So as you can see, if I play it, you just have your know, different like um, Tyreek Hill running clips and then Tyreek Hill running, Tyreek Hill running. I found a lot of times putting related clips together so either catching the football dunking the basketball putting some related clips together clips that are kind of the same thing I find can look really good but that is just my personal preference now another really important tip is save your slow motion or your slow shots for the beginning and the end as you can see you have a couple slow shots for the beginning and then I have a couple slow shots for the end. So keep your slow, maybe kind of boring shots for the end to kind of use it as an intro and a 
outro. Next I want to go over is how to color grade your clip and a couple tips and tricks. So you can see right here, what you want to do is you want to individually color correct your clips. So if I go over to the color wheel right here, as you can see, I've just adjusted the color wheel. So what you want to do is go over to windows and then workspace and then just go over to color and effects. And just some things to keep in mind is you want to make sure it doesn't go below zero or above 100. So that is just a really important tip. I have a whole video breaking down color grading. But you want to color correct every individual clip and then what you want to do is you want to add some sort of LUT. Now I have videos showing how to add LUTs but the two main ways of doing it is either having an adjustment layer so all these clips under the, the adjustment layer are being are you having this um, custom LUT or you can individually apply the LUT to a clip. So you can either have it on the adjustment layer or go to the, the, the individual clip and then apply a, uh, um, a LUT or a color LUT. Now I've done a whole bunch of really cool videos going over color grading and LUTs so definitely go ahead and check that out. Again this video is just a breakdown and overview of how to edit a sports mixtape but those are just a couple tips and tricks that I would just keep in mind when you're editing a sports mixtape. And this I want to go over is visual effects. Now in my opinion I found sticking to four to five main visual effects I think look the best. So what I did for example is I stuck to freeze frame transitions, split screen effects, paper effects, and still frames. And I just kind of reuse those different effects and put my different spin on it. In my opinion, I feel like sticking to four or five main visual effects is really important. If you just have a whole bunch of random visual effects, I just feel like the video gets thrown all out of whack. So I would stick to four or five visual effects and then just alter them and you use different versions of them. In my opinion, being consistent with the visual effects I think is really important. You may be asking yourself, how in the world do you end a sports mixtape? Well, in my opinion, I think using a graphic is a great way to end a mixtape. So as you can see, I just have a cutout collage of Tyree Kill. I just find adding some sort of graphic. Now I have a whole video called like scrapbook um, collage effects. So if you don't go ahead and check out that video for some different ideas. But I just feel like ending the video with a graphic, in my opinion, just looks really good. So just my personal preference, I think ending a video in a graphic is just going to make your mixtape just a little bit more interesting. As well, you can use this graphic for the thumbnail on the Instagram or for the Instagram video. The next I want to go over is sound design. Now, when you're doing sound design, I would always do sound design last. And here are just my, you know, tips and tricks. I would go through your video and just write down potential sound effects. So just go through your video and just say, okay, this needs a sound, this needs a sound, this doesn't need a sound. Don't go overboard with sound effects and then download them from, my opinion, I did Epidemic Sound, Art List. There are a whole bunch of great places to download um, sound effects. So in my opinion, the first step is just identifying what sound effects you need and then going ahead and going out and either recording them yourself or buying them or downloading them. Always encourage you to write down your sound effects just, you know, just so it's much more organized. Now another really important part of sound design is fading. So you can see right here this sound effect is faded and then this is faded. Always fade your audio in and out because if you don't the audio might start um, clipping. So that is just a important step. Always make sure as you can see it's faded in right here. Always fade your audio in and out or else you're going to you know have clipping or you know have potential clipping and that always you know sounds really awful. Now another really important thing to do too is watch your audio meters. So if I click on this music, let's say I want to solo this music, click on this headphone icon, click on this audio meter and now you can solo your music just to make sure it's at a good level. And so if you want to solo individual things, click on here and then just um, you know, click on this again to get rid of it, adjust your audio meters, and now once you've soloed your different, you know, tracks, made sure that the sound effects and the music aren't clipping or going above, or going above zero, and then after you're done, you want to play it all together. And now you have to worry about mixing your audio. Make sure when all the sound effects and all the music is added on together that you don't have any clipping. Remember, you usually want your sound right about here, between negative two, negative three. You really don't want it going above zero or going above negative three. In this area is the best place. So always, always make sure that your audio is not peaking or clipping. Always check your audio meters before you export your video. Now another really important part of a video is motion blur. Now you don't want to do motion blur first. Always do motion blur as the very last step. And all you're doing is you're putting motion blur over your animations. So you can see this um, sliding animation has a little bit of blur to it. 
all motion blur does is it just smooths out the animation and makes it look a lot nicer so all you're going to do is place the motion blur on top of your keyframe animations and i will put the link to the motion blur plugin down in the description below do this very very last and only put motion blur over anything you keyframed again motion blur is just going to smooth out animations and the last thing you want to do is export your video. Now before you export your video, if you're using proxy media, so let's say this is checked, you want to switch it back to optimized media. So when you're exporting the video, you want to make sure optimized slash original playback is selected. Now what you're going to do is click on command E to export your video. Now you want to go over here to settings and then format video and audio in this section right here. So make sure it's video and audio. And then in most cases, H.264 is a really important codec and I would always use H.264 codec as you know the codec you're using for social media. So and then you just click on here, click on next and there we go. And then the video would just export. Obviously I'm not going to do that because you know it's going to take a very long time. But the most important thing to take away from this is use H.264 when you're using exporting videos for Instagram or YouTube or social media. Anyways, hopefully you enjoyed this video. Hopefully you found it helpful and informative. If you're new to this channel, I upload Final Cut Pro 10 tutorials every week at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. So if you enjoy these types of videos, definitely consider hitting that subscribe button. I also have a playlist with over 290 Final Cut Pro 10 tutorials. So if you want to watch more videos like this, definitely go ahead and check out that playlist. And if you want to watch this video, it's actually also on my Instagram. So if you want to watch this complete full video, you can also head to my um, Instagram. So anyways, I'll see you in the next one. Peace.